So come on then, tell me what it's all about. All right, hang on while I get a coffee. You drag me out, you sit me down in your kitchen, you ply me with coffee, which I notice has no whiskey in it. You hint you have a brilliant idea. And as Judith Murray sent you loving praises for your novel, have you discovered how to turn dross into gold? You're close when speaking of Judith Murray. I've got this idea about literary agents. It's how to make them and us sums of money so vast that alchemy looks cheap. Sounds good, especially us bit. You remember the chat we had about Judith and why we both agreed she was the best literary agent around? Okay, well hang on to those thoughts while I sketch in the background. Fire ahead. There are three facts we know. Fact one, we know that if we submit our novels to be read through the slush pile, we stand only an extremely remote chance of being chosen. Fact two, we know that literary agents find works worth publishing primarily through recommendation. These books are read carefully, after all, they've been recommended. But there's a problem here for us, fact three. Not one of our friends has the decency to be a literary agent. But we did our research. We saw Judith's track record. We saw the writers she already represents. We dug deeper and saw the encouragement to new writers and the resourceful searches for new talent. We saw the impressive roll call of deals concluded. Because we did the research, we know that Judith is the one we would wish to have as a literary agent. So what have we learned from these three facts? We've learned that if we want to get our books read, we must find a way to make ourselves known to Judith Murray. That's our job. If we succeed in that, Ian Smith would be more likely to get Redemption's song published, and Roger Murphy might even get Franco's parrot read. So what are you suggesting? Is it the Stockholm Syndrome thing, where we kidnap Judith and within a week she won't be able to live without us? Close, but no cigar. We agree we've got to get to know Judith, but my brilliant idea is that we don't. We want her to get to know us. We want her to phone us up and plead with us to send her our manuscripts. We want to take a call from her. Ian, Roger, how lovely to talk to you. I'm sending over a courier to collect Redemption Song on Franco's Barrett this very afternoon. We'll be in touch by the end of the week. Are you and Roger free for lunch on Wednesday next by any chance? That, or something slightly like it, is the phone call we should work towards. Okay, and how do we do that? We recreate this meeting and video it. We put it on YouTube. We tell Judith's office it's there. She'll watch it. She'll want to know what we're saying because it's in the public domain in front of thousands of people, some of whom are her competitors, her contacts, who will inevitably get to know about it and we are referring very publicly to her services and skills. It's three minutes long. By the end, we will have mentioned Judith many times and sung her praises. All her rival agents will be gnashing their teeth. She'll quickly get over the embarrassment of being mentioned so glowingly. Ian Smith's redemption song will be lodged in her mind, as will Roger Murphy's Franco's parrot. Obviously, she will send round a courier immediately to collect our novels before anyone gets the chance. She will also realise that we're pretty good at marketing. Cheeky, but good. Even if she hates the video, she will now know our names and she will recognise that we have found a way to get her attention. And in doing that, we will have succeeded in our aim. It's brilliant! Let's do it! Uh, oh, where's that damn coffee?